it's me um so <laughs> uh if you've seen one of my previous videos i think i don't know maybe like one or two i don't know how many videos i have on this um but you know that i like to read um and like anyone who likes to read i have a shelf full of books that are just dying to be cracked open and you know that need to be read of course it's a very long list um that i will get to eventually um eventually someday uh today's not the day but i have a problem <laughs> where i can't stop buying books okay now granted um <laughs> if they were like full price then yeah like i would make myself read them um but you know like i go to the dollar store often and i look at the books and they're like usually not that bad but every now and then i see one that i'm like oh, you know like that might be good that has potential <laughs> um sometimes they don't most of the time not really um but i went you see where this is going don't you um i went to the dollar store the other day and i found some books um i also have some from the last time i went so this is just like basically a book haul save the book that i got that made me think of doing this um for last just because it's so it's unreal <laughs> um but I mean, I'm sure if you are currently in like middle school or elementary school or something or you have a sibling who is, you've probably seen it or heard of it or maybe not at all. But I also plan on doing a follow-up video on a sort of like review of these books. I know, bleh, boring, who cares? Uh, we don't read here. I'm watching YouTube. You sent me to read. Yeah, I know. Hard. The, the most reading we've done all quarantine is the captions, I know. Um, the first one is The Feed, a novel by Nick Clark Window. See, it's, it says, it makes us, it destroys us. Now you must learn to live without it. It's $26, 27. Um, the Feed is accessible everywhere by everyone at any time. It leads us instantaneously to all information and global events as they break. Tom and Kate use the feed, but Tom has resisted its addiction, which makes him suspect to his family. The feed's collapsed, taking modern society with it, leaving pe leaves people scavenging, scavenging to survive. I swear I can read. Um, Tom and Kate have managed to protect themselves and their family, but then their six-year-old daughter, B, goes missing. Um, who has taken her? Okay, but just like opening up to a random page, this text is like way too tiny. Um, I mean, it's not. It's just like a normal book, like, test. Um, I'm sure that was probably spoilers for whatever happened, but I don't care. Um, because, I mean, who's gonna read these? Nobody. Um, the next one is Light Years by Cass Morrison, which I didn't know. That's why the creator of The Hundred, the, this one is, uh, really for me, Devastating Attack by a Mysterious Enemy, the Quarcha Corda? I don't know. Fleet Academy is opening its doors to a new class of cadets from every planet in the solar system. A uh, hotshot pilot Vesper dreams of becoming a captain, but when she loses her spot to a wisecracking boy from the wrong side of the astro belt, she begins to question everything she thought she knew. So lovers to enemies, star-crossed if you will. <laughs> um, uh, trapped in the toxic planet Diva, Cormac will take any chance he can to join the academy, even if he has to steal someone's identity to get there. Aaron was always on, an outcast on icy, uh, to tire. Just I don't know, C-H-E-T-I-R-E. I'm sure one of y'all know how to pronounce that. And is looking for a place to belong. He just thought it would never be in the arms of the hottest guy in the galaxy. Norella has infiltrated a fleet to complete a mission, one that threatens the security of everyone around her. So it's like a four-person perspective. Per it's a four-person perspective. Four-person perspective. But, you know, this will be fun. Uh, like, I mean, the text for this one is, like, kind of big. Also, I'm sure that's spoilers for something. Um... I saw something about Aaron blushing A A A R R A N whatever. The next one is Enter a Glossy Web with illustration, which as any good book would. 
you know, I don't know what's happening here. I haven't read it. I've only read like the last page, which I, and I, um, George, please don't call her Georgina, um, has no idea what's in store for her when she sent to her eccentric relatives following the disappearance of her brother. Uh, her brother goes missing. Uh, she has an uncle, Constantine, informing her that he's in dire need of help. She sets off again. On the way, she's joined by Michael and Caleb, two orphan boys in Cavendish, the talking map. They formed Snaffle Chart Company. Uh, what starts as a mystery. Oh, they have to locate the timekeeper. I'm only like picking and choosing. If I tried to like read all of this, it would be way too much. Again, like big words, like font. But this is a, another one. Um, that I okay. I'm getting to the territory of the ones that I got um, today. I mean, I have like one more like towards the end that I got. It's not the last one, but it's the second to last one. This one is Just Under the Clouds by Melissa uh, Sarno. Home is never out of reach. I have no idea what it's about. I didn't see, like, I didn't look at the cover. I just picked it up and I was like, yeah, sure, that looks fine. Um, it talks about, like, trees? I don't know. I read the last chapter and I, like, the last page and I didn't get a single thing from that. Wow, who would have thought? Um, always think in trees and you'll never fall. Cora's father told her when she was a little girl, two feet, one hand, two hands, one foot. That's all Cora needed to climb the trees of Brooklyn. I'm cutting that out. You won't, you won't see that. You won't hear that. You're not going to know. Um, but now Cora is a middle schooler, a big sister, and homeless. Her mother is trying to hold the family together since her father's death, and Cora must look after her sister, Adari, who's just different, their mother insists. Quick to smile, Adari hates wearing shoes, rarely speaks, and appears in trouble by the question. Cora can't help but at and can't help but to ask, how will they find a place to call home? After the room of the shelter is ransacked, Cora's mother looks to an old friend for help. But even with a new place to live is Cora's discovery of the tree of heaven, which can go in even the worst conditions that sets her on a path to discover a deeper truth about where she really belongs. Um that's about trees. They live in a tree house, I'm gonna assume. And then this one I got today. Not today, it was yesterday. Um is Ali Kondai and Brendan Righteous. The Dark Deep. Come closer if you dare. It's like a, um, I have no idea. But it mentions Stranger Things on the back, which I didn't see until I got home. Um, something ancient has awakened. Everyone in Timber's nose, it's still cold. It's off limits with this creepy beast that is an equal terrifying legend. Though the island still appears uninhabited, the kids can't shake a feeling that something about it is definitely not right. As the group delves into this mysterious clubhouse, their lives begin to intertwine in weird and dangerous ways. So from alternating point of views, this pulse racing tale from bestseller selling duo Ali Kondai and Brendan Righteous at the start of a high stakes thrilling series about friendship, believing in yourself and others. I believe this also has like, yeah, much like um, Carry On, it's in parts, there's four parts, uh, Figments, Supers, Figments, Tunnel, and Deep Dark, or Dark Deep, whatever. It's fun, it seems like it's gonna be a stupid like cheesy horror one which I can't rate. Wait, this one, I don't know why I picked it up, I, it's, it's too far, it's highly recommended, um, TV is chilling and scrappy. Tin Star is a space rain thrill of a read. Uh, written in spare, vivid prose. Tin Star was an intense read. To the Bane is the kind of nonsense hero heroine I love. I don't know. Um, I knew where I was. I was on a remote space station, 16 light years from Earth. Severely beaten and left for dead, To the Bane finds herself abandoned on an alien space station far from Earth. Here she must adapt to the extraterrestrial way of life by outsmarting and trading with the natives. Oh, fun, fun. Luckily, she befriends Hart Hecklek, an alien who helps her survive in the deep underbelly of the station. As she gets back on her feet, she thirsts for revenge, as you do. She has the perfect, uh, and then the perfect opportunity presents itself. Uh, in the form of three humans crashing on the station, the itch to escape is irrescapable. I have a feeling that she's gonna kill someone and people are gonna turn her into a Tumblr hot woman. Actually, maybe not because the current Tumblr hot woman is Lady uh, Dimitrescu. Uh, but as the maps of the galaxy change, Julia discovers things are more, much more inter interconnected than 
she had thought finished will not be easy. It's kind of tiny text. I mean, it's like paragraphed, of course. There's no like double spacing, double paragraphing. I don't know if that made sense. Um, I hope it does. Anyway, and then there's this one. Um, the Inventors at number eight. Uh, it looks cute. I got this. This is one of the ones that I got before. Um, but it looks cute. Uh, but it says, Meet George, the third lord of Devonshire at the unlucky and the unluckiest boy in London. Why is George the unlucky, unluckiest boy in London? First, he's an orphan. Second, unless he sells everything, he's going to lose his house. So when his family's last heirloom, a priceless map no, to the Star of Victory, a unique gem said to bring its owner success in any battle is stolen by a group of criminals, George knows that there is no one less lucky or more alone than he is. That is until Ada Byron, the future countess of Lovelace, Lovelace bursts into his life. She promises to help George recover his birthright and restore his family's good name, and is determined to find her father along the way. All in a flying machine, she built herself, joined a, by a boy with a mischievous past, a mysterious past, a mischievous orangutan, George and Ida take off on a cross-continent journey through the skies that would change their lives and perhaps the world forever. This is kind of like the other ones where it's like a kind of tiny, not it's it's large, small pages, very small pages. It's the size of my hand, which you don't know. This is either a very tiny book or it's a very large book and I have like giant hands. You don't know unless you see me in person and you know, who knows if that'll happen. We have gotten to the meat of this video. Um, the one that started it all. I didn't know that this was uh, third in the third book in uh, a four book series. <laughs> it's... <laughs> sound so much like more mysterious and scary than it is but I picked it up because it looked very um very like I don't know how to say this without like being mean um very interesting and unique okay. first off the pages are like very thick which you know I can appreciate in any good book um but it's by Lauren Marcel, later Gator. <laughs> um, through texts and messages, three best friends through the highs and lows of high school. It's... <laughs> the only reason why I picked it up is because of this. It's like the entire book is like that. Just like this testing format. Um, and I didn't know until I got home and had posted it on Twitter like this looks weird or I love it that my friend Ryan was like, hey, this reminds me of like those Wattpad testing stories, but even worse. And I was like, yeah, you know, I need to look up like if there's more in this series or it was originally, I was gonna look up how much it costs. It normally costs like $16. Um, and I found out that there's four, three other books. Um, there's TTYL, which is the first one, TTFN, uh, Talk To You Never, I believe. Ooh, it starts out with talk to you later, and then it goes to talk to you never. So I'm gonna assume that the three best friends have a fight, and it's all about them rekindling and, and, and talking to each other differently. I don't know, it's, the first one is in 10th grade, uh, TTYN is in 11th, uh, later Gators in 12th, I guess, and the last one is YOLO, which I guess takes place in college, the first year of college, I don't know, I don't know, I haven't read it, I can't believe I got this, um, I mean, I'm not that mad at it because it was only a dollar, but if I, like, walked into a store and I saw this for, like, 16 15 like, $20, I would be irrationally angry. <laughs> I mean, like, I wouldn't do anything about it, of course. I would just sit there and, like, stew in my own anger. Like, why is this popular? But it's books like these uh, in this format that remind me that maybe um, becoming an author isn't as hard as I thought it would be. I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm not saying that the author has no talent because I am sure they are very lovely, like, and great and that their other books are very good 
Um, but you know, it's just, you know, if, if something as, um, well loved as this can be published, then my own works could be published. It's like, I don't want to like be mean to any of these because I'm sure the authors put a whole lot of love into it and they poured their hearts into it. <laughs> um, so like, they're all like good, like every work of art is good, unless it's harmful, except for the first one where it's like, dude, shut up. This, this main character from like the pages I've skimmed over is so annoying. And I have this like unnecessary um, dislike for him, not a hatred, but I, I am not rooting for this MC. I want him to, I don't know, <laughs> like become a part of the feed or the monster or whatever. But in conclusion today, I have a problem. <laughs> um, uh, but this isn't uh, including all of the ones that I have sitting in a box in storage or the ones that I have sitting in shopping carts on thrift books or like Amazon or like literally anywhere. Um, and it's not including the ones that I got and then I never read and I just like gave them away to friends like Divergent. I don't like Divergent. I don't know why I got two of those books, um, but whatever. I do plan on reading all of these hopefully by the end of the- before the end of the channel. Um, and I'll like make a video on them. I'm not gonna make a video on like every single book uh, as I read it because that would be like way too many uh, But I'm probably just gonna like take them and just like compile them in a notes app or something to do for a later video um, Hopefully like I said before the end of the channel, but if it's not <laughs> um, If I if it's not out by the end of, end of the before the end of the channel then I'll definitely like take a, a break to talk about it um, during the end of the channel, which is alarmingly close, um, and like I know that these videos will be here forever, uh, I mean like as long as YouTube is up, there'll be a point where we stop making videos uh, by that, I mean us, this, this original, this first cast, this first crew. Uh, we'll stop making videos and it'll be someone new. So I, I feel like you should really um, share the channel and like and subscribe and comment and, and, and hire a skywriter. Um, <laughs> before it's too late, that's a joke. Don't hire a skywriter. I don't know if those are even actually around. Um, just, I don't know, because it's getting closer every day. Um, I don't like being sentimental. Uh, but I'm gonna go because not only do I have like a giant stack of books to get through but I've also been talking for too long and I need to go plan some secret stuff um, which you won't know about until it happens so you know that'll be fun keep an eye out for said secret stuff but I'm gonna go uh, have a nice day take care of yourself drink some water um, do whatever you need to do to feel better if it's healthy. Do whatever you healthily need to do to feel better. Also, happy pride. Uh, have fun. Enjoy your day. Enjoy yourself.